shocking new details about the Secret Service's failure to protect former President Trump from the gunman on Saturday are emerging. CBS reports that a local law enforcement officer with direct knowledge of the incident said three snipers were stationed inside the building the shooter used in his attack. Now, one of the snipers inside the building saw the gunman looking up at the roof, observed it, and he disappeared, then came back, at which point one of the snipers took a picture of the gunman. By the time other officers came for backup, the gunman was already on top of the building, according to CBS. Bystanders who saw the gunman on the roof were calling out to police for nearly a minute and a half before shots started firing. It was ultimately a Secret Service sniper that killed the gunman. Now, Secret Service Director Kim Cheadle gave ABC News a very curious explanation for why there was no sniper stationed on the roof itself. She, she said, quote, that building in particular has a sloped roof at its highest point, and so you know there's a safety factor that would be considered there that we wouldn't want to put somebody up on a sloped roof. Huh? Now, the FBI is continuing its investigation and has searched through the gunman's phone, conducted over 100 interviews, and searched through his home and vehicle where two explosive devices were found. On the day of the shooting, Crooks told his father he wanted to go to a shooting range and asked to borrow his father's AR-15 rifle, according to ABC News. The father said it wasn't an unusual ask. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was asked whether he believed this was a failure by Secret Service. Take a listen. Do you agree that it was a failure? You said this cannot happen, but first and foremost, before you make sure you make the changes, you have to acknowledge what a failure this was. Uh, Kate, when I say that something like this cannot happen, we are speaking of a failure. We are going to analyze through an independent review uh, how that occurred, why it occurred, and make recommendations and findings to make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, President Biden has ordered an independent review of security at the rally. And in good news for RFK Jr., President Biden also directed Mayorkas to give RFK Jr. Secret Service protection. Plus, congressional committees, including the House Committee on Oversight and Accountability and the Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee, announced investigations into the security failures that led to the assassination attempt. The first hearing about the shooting is scheduled for Monday, July 22nd with the director of U.S. Secret Service, Kimberly Cheadle, who we also quoted in that interview. She also said in that same interview uh, with ABC that they sought assistance from local counterparts for that outer perimeter where the building was. Uh, but I do think that's just, it's not enough to say, like, we outsource that to local police and that's why there was an assassination attempt. They've got to change the way they do that. She says the buck stops with me, but I'm not stepping down. Yeah, this is giving me serious flashbacks to Uvalde, the uh, mass school shooting where the shooter was trapped, had barricaded himself in a classroom with children and teachers who were shot and were dying, and the cops waited outside the door and waited and waited and waited and waited, despite receiving phone calls from the dying children inside the room that they're People were still alive and needed immediate medical attention, despite the training for police officers in that exact situation being to, you, you, that, that's the job. I mean, they're, they're heroes when they do their job to put themselves in harm's way for the rest of us. But what the training is, is don't wait, don't negotiate, don't treat it as a hostage situation. You rush the shooter. Um, that, is the, that is the lesson since Columbine. When it happened with Columbine, police didn't know how to handle that sort of thing. But in every subsequent case, you're supposed to engage the shooter, not wait for backup, not formulate some plan, engage the shooter. Um, and horrific, horrific uh, uh, mis, uh, uh, misbehavior uh, transpired there. In this case, obviously it is still early and we are still investigating and we're still trying to understand what went wrong. But the idea that you wouldn't put a sniper on the roof where the shooter actually ended up using because the, the roof was sloped. I mean, it wasn't so sloped you couldn't get up there. The shooter was up there and was able to get a shot off and wound Nick Donald Trump. So it, it couldn't be that precarious a position or that dangerous a position because the guy was up there and was able to do what he had come to do, um, failing, thank goodness, by a matter of inches. So that is, and then the snipers were in the building. In the building? They gotta be on top of the building. It, it was an obvious, like if you look, I am, I am no 
expert on security procedures or details. I'm sure you probably aren't either, Jessica. And I think anyone looking at a map of that area would go, huh, that roof looks a little um, like, a, like the right vantage point for a would-be assassin. And you would think that they would have had the foresight to, to do something about that. So she has offered, this Kimberly Cheadle person has not has not given us any reason to be reassured that the actions of the police were um, were um, good here. So I'm I'm very you know there are a lot of questions for her still to answer, but um, this is shaping up to look like an absolute cluster F. Right. Yeah. They should have had someone on another roof that wasn't sloped that had access to that route or a clean shot to that roof because at the end of the day, this shooter. Thomas Crooks ended up injuring two people and killing one person. Yeah. And Corey Com Compatore, I don't know how to say his last name, he, the, he yeah, lost the his victim, life yeah. the, Yes, that day. Now, he's being called a hero. The heroes that were supposed to be there that day were the Secret Service and the local police officers. That's how you earn the title of hero when you agree to do the job where you unfortunately do have to lay your life on the line. There are circumstances where you know, you might feel an immediate threat because your target that you need to neutralize has an AR-15, but you can't earn the title of hero without the heroism. You have to do something in a situation like that. And the fact that nothing was done, and it reminds us of Uvalde, and the amount of money we're spending on police, I think a lot of people are questioning how public safety can happen in a way where we guarantee that the officers that are serving are good people that are willing to really do the job when the situation calls for them to do the hardest parts of their job. Yeah, I, and I, I don't mean to discount that it is, it takes real courage to risk your life. Mm -hmm. um, that is, is, is something that not everyone is capable of doing. I'm not saying I'm some great hero myself, but I didn't go into this line of work. Um, and, and they should be well compensated and their families should be taken care of in the, it should be structured so that if they do have to pay the ultimate um, sacrifice in order to, to do their duty, that they are treated the way they deserve to be treated for that. But that is part of the job is to, uh, put yourself in in harm's way, and 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 you're right to bring up that you know while we we are so glad that Donald Trump was not killed or even uh, seriously injured at all, uh, someone did lose their life. Um, it was struck in the head, killed instantly, and two other people were uh, pretty seriously injured. From from what we haven't seen a lot of additional reporting on that, but uh, so this was not a th this was not an incident that that was consequence free. Someone died mm -hmm. uh, because. Potentially, they did not do their job well enough. It certainly seems like they didn't. And we're it getting, seems, seems like obvious problems were missed here. As the days pass since the, the Saturday of the assassination attempt, we're getting more and more reports that officers went up to the roof, saw the guy, have taken they pictures saw him. of the guy. They knew he was there. This is a very different circumstances, circumstance from when we hear local officers using deadly force. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more dangerous to serve a no-knock warrant when the people inside are potentially armed than it is to shoot someone from a distance who is on a roof with an AR-15 rifle. They could have directed Secret Service to take out the target as they ultimately did. There was a course of action they could have taken there. And it's strange to me that local law enforcement is more quick to use excessive force on unarmed civilians than an armed a, a, assassin at yeah. a presidential rally. Yeah. That's insane to me. And just, and just to follow up uh, before we go, uh, like I'm seeing some video footage now on social media of the roof that the, the, the snipers who, who took out the shooter that they fired from, that they were positioned on, is, is absolutely itself sloped. So the idea that you couldn't have um, police on a sloped roof is, is just like, that's utterly, that's not true. They were on a sloped roof. They were on a different roof that had, <laughs> It I, I doesn't look like it's more sloped than the other one. It looks, if anything, less or equal. It's not significantly different. So that is just a total BS excuse, and she needs to answer a lot more questions about it. More rising right after this.